it's been called a lonely disease, a devastating condition with a diagnosis that terrifies parents and dramatically alters the lives of their children, their families, forever. I'm Forrest Sawyer, and tonight you will learn more about Friedrich's Ataxia and the organization determined to find a cure. I mean, imagine that, age 17, the world is your oyster, you know? Possibilities are endless. And then to find out that it's nothing but downhill from here on out. Sometimes I get frustrating. One time I was walking and I lost my balance and fell all the way down the basement stairs. I just hope for more energy and more balance and I can just run around and be a normal kid. Friedrich's Ataxia is a thief, robbing its victims of their coordination, their independence, and eventually their lives. At our last visit, his cardiologist said to me, he's at risk for a cardiac event at any moment. So then you leave the office thinking, how, do you, how are you supposed to deal with that? I drop him off at school and I worry that I'm not gonna see him at the end of the day. My biggest concern is losing him. Because I can't imagine our life without him. Chelsea is now 16. She was diagnosed when she was four and a half. She was wheelchair bound pretty soon. She has now lost her sight. She has pretty impaired speech. We do all activities for her of daily living. She's pretty dependent upon her parents, her and her family. I was 25. I went to a Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Paul and myself, we were engaged at the time, and they said, you have FA, and there's not much we can do about it. Come back if you have any problems. <laughs> at first, parents and patients had nowhere to turn. There was little research, zero treatments, and no advocacy group, until one couple decided to change all that. We you know, uh, sat there together embracing in tears and said, but it looks like there's something we can do here. In 1998, Ron Bartek and his wife decided to take action after their son received his diagnosis. They turned to the National Institutes of Health. Rachel and I are here for one reason. We, we'd like to get your help and can, can we ask for your help? And she said, oh no, you don't understand. Uh, you're here to help us. Farah and its core group of families and scientists grew quickly. The impact was swift and profound. It's given me hope, it gives me promise, it gives me reason to keep fighting for my daughter. She's really waiting on that medicine for me to walk. Mm -hmm. Farah established its mission to cure F.A. and has never wavered. Respected F.A. researchers, Drs. David Lynch and Rob Wilson, like many others around the world, work tirelessly to make progress toward the cure. Over the course of the past decade, since I first became involved in FARA, we've come a long ways, from simple or basic genetic information to now a better understanding of the biochemistry, translation of that into early therapies, as well as now definitively tested therapies. Given that FARA has eggs in so many baskets, has experimental therapeutics in the pipeline, has clinical trials already in progress, I think it's highly likely that within three to five years we will have effective treatments. Many are determined to make that happen. People like FA patient and fundraiser Kyle Bryant. He's turned adversity into opportunity. He started a grassroots effort called Ride Ataxia to raise awareness about FA. Today, Ride Ataxia has evolved into a national powerhouse and raised over $700,000 for research in just a few short years. I think the future of Ridey Taxia is really bright, and I see it getting bigger and bigger. I see it involving as many people, spreading that feeling of empowerment, involving tons of people, raising lots of money so we can find that cure. All this money is going straight to the researchers to find that cure, and that's our ultimate goal. We have the finish line in sight, effective treatments, 
and a cure that will give life back to tens of thousands of FA patients, making Friedrich's ataxia a disease of the past and providing powerful insights and benefits to the millions suffering from other neurological disorders. And it really is a complex problem and um, I think it's going to take the efforts of everybody to solve this. And I just want to thank again Farah for their efforts in accelerating us because I'm, I'm certain we're probably 6 to 12 months ahead of where we would have been without them and every day counts for the lives of these patients. With six clinical trials in place and more on the horizon, we have the momentum we need to cross the finish line. These costly trials are essential to our success. You are essential to our success. With your help, we will find a cure.